Hey, everybody, and welcome to Calculus. Um, so I already have some calculus videos out there that go over um, things uh, to the effect of um, how you do problems on the book. Um, but that's just a backup resource. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm showing you a video that has um, notes that you can use on the test, as well as um, a sample Math Excel homework assignment, similar to like a review or whatever, um, where the answers are in the back, like you can see, like right here. So um, this is kind of like printed notes. Um, this is not a grade, because I already gave you the answers. Um, but if you want to use this uh, in order to work your problem, um, you can. And like they usually change the odd numbers to like a different odd number, and they change some other things. So um, let's start with this. Um, also remember this is part of my differentiation, um, which is a fancy teacher word for um, if I'm using a video, I could either pause the video and talk, or some people may want to work faster and they can fast forward. And then some people um, may need individual help, but I'll still play the whole video um, and work that way. So um, differentiation basically means work at um, your own pace. All right, um, so there's many objectives in this. Um, it is just about functions, but there's a lot. Um, there's functions, finding formulas for functions, functions and graphs, piecewise defined, um, which has several parts, greatest and least integer, um, which is kind of like a step function, like going up like that but not overlapping, where one one side or the other has to have a hole like that. Um, and then increasing and decreasing and even an odd. Okay, so there's a lot of different parts to this. Um, so why we're studying this, um, in this chapter we look at a special type of equation involving two variables called a function. So it's not just um, like x plus 3 equal 5. You know, um, we want one with two variables because that's, that's just one. So then um, like something with x and y. That, or you could say something like that. Um, those are just really, really easy examples. Um, this chapter deals with what a function is, how to graph functions, properties of functions, and how they're used in applications. Um, the word function was apparently introduced by René Descartes in 1637. For him, a function simply meant any positive integral power of a variable x. Um, so in other words, an integer power, like x to the first, x squared, x cubed, etc. Um, not something like x to the half, which is the square root of x. Okay. Um, as a reminder, because I know it's been a long time, um, you could say this is the square root and then put x here, write it as a little 1 there, and write it as a 2 there. Um, we don't usually do that, but that's just to remind you the 1 is your numerator, and the root is the denominator. So for example, if it's like a 3 there and a 2 there, then that's um, then it's x to the two-thirds. So your two goes on top, your three is your root, which goes on bottom. Root and the denominator. And that's probably just a review of what you've seen before. Um, now moving on, Gottfried um, William Leibniz, um, who also emphasized the geometric side, 
um, or graphing side basically use the word function to denote any quantity with a curve um, such as coordinates on a point on a curve like a parabola. Um, Leonard Euler um, employed the word to mean any equation or formula involving variables and constants. His idea is similar to the one most often seen in um, pre-calculus in Algebra 2, anything before calculus, anything that precedes calculus. Um, later, the use of functions investigating heat flow equations um, led to a very broad definition um, due to Lejeune Dirilect, which describes a function as a correspondence between two sets. It's his definition um, that we use here. Um, often there's situations where one variable is somehow linked to the value of another. For example, an individual's level of education is linked to the annual income. So sometimes, not always, the more college you go to, the higher you're going to get paid. Uh, there's definitely exceptions because, like, you could become a truck driver and make $50,000. Um, you can be a plumber and not go to a four-year school or master's degree or doctorate degree and make a lot of money. So um, it's not, like, necessarily a one-to-one -one correspondence, but there is a relationship. Um, so engine size is linked to gas mileage. Um, the bigger the engine, the worse the gas mileage. Like a V8 would get worse gas mileage than a V6. But it also could be funner to drive or it could just have more power. So um, when the value of one variable is related to the second, we have a relation uh, the idea behind a function is the predictability. If the input is known, we can determine the output. So that's one of the things I like about math, um, especially like the algebra, algebra 2, um, pre-cal, calculus, is there's really an answer. It's not like English where there could be multiple answers um, because these are math facts. Like there's only one answer when you have the square root of 2x minus 3 equal to 5. There's only one answer for that. Um, it can't be 2, 3, 4 answers, whatever. Um, with non-functions, we don't have this predictability. So um, again, for your intro, functions are fundamental to the study of calculus. In this chapter, we review what functions are and how they're visualized as graphs, how they're combined and transformed, and ways they can be classified. Um, functions are a tool for describing the real world in math terms. A function can be represented by an equation, a graph, a table, or a description. OK, so now talking about functions and domain and range. So when we say y is a function of x, then we have y equal f of x. That's not f times x. So that I know you probably already remember, um, but just as a reminder. Um, the symbol f represents the function. x is the independent variable representing the input. So whatever you choose, basically. And y is the dependent variable or output variable. So um, based on your input, you have a certain output. f of x is the value changing in x. Um, not changing. f of x is the value of the function at x or the image of x. So sometimes they call that the image. Um, the function from a set D to a set Y is a rule that assigns a unique value f of x in Y to each x in D. So 
that sounds complicated, but it just means like if you have an X, that matches a Y. So in this case, a D would match to a Y. So um, that's what, all that they mean right there. Um, the set D for domain um, is the set of um, possible input values. The output variables, um, those are going to be called the range because they're the Y values. So the most important thing is when we have X and we have Y, this is your domain values and this is your range values. Um, so I just wrote this part. You have a little table, X and Y. X is your domain, range is your Y, and you have your numbers. Okay, um, when we define a function y equal f of x with a formula and the domain is not stated explicitly or restricted by context, then we assume it's the largest set. Um, and that's going to be called the natural domain. So for example, um, just in everyday life, we don't usually talk about negative money unless you're talking about a checking account where maybe they let you go negative 500. I mean, they're going to charge you um, a certain fee, like $25, $50, whatever, but they would cover a check so it's not bounced. Um, so normally we would think money, normally we think money is greater than or equal to zero. Um, it could be decimals and so forth, but only with two decimal places. Anyway, I'm not going to go into that more. Um, so that's also electronic money. Now dollar bills have to be whole numbers. Dollar bills are whole numbers. It's just common sense. All right. Um, when the range of a function is a set of real numbers, the function is said to be real valued because it's real numbers. Um, the function could be pictured as an arrow diagram. A relation could be um, between two sets so that the number in the first goes exactly to the second. So in other words, say you have 1 going to 3, 2 going to 4, etc. Um, not 1 going to 3 and 1 going to 4. That would not be a relation. Um, a set of ordered pairs, x, y, or you could even say x, f of x, in which no element in the first part is corresponding to two different ones like that. Um, and we do say use parentheses when it does not include the number and brackets when it does. Um, we're also going to be talking about graphs of functions representing a function numerically, which could be a table or it could be a list of values. Um, the vertical line test for whether it determines whether it's a function. Um, if it passes the test, um, then it is a function. So for example, um, if you have something like that, that passes. And if you have something like that, then it fails. Um, to me, this section is really the easiest um, Math Excel section because it is such a review of something you've seen before. Um, but trust me, these lessons really are long, and it does get complicated pretty quick. Um, we're going to talk about piecewise functions. For example, you could say f of x is, has, has a few parts. It could be a certain number when x is a certain number. Um, it could be a certain number when x is between two numbers like I'm going to say between 4 and 8. Um, it could be linear when it's like um, 
I'm going to say between 8 less than x less than 12. And it could even turn into something really weird um, when x is less than or equal to 12. Um, I meant greater than. Um, greater than or equal to 12. So you can have multiple parts, and you just got to think, OK, well, what was x? If it were 2, then my y value is 5. And so if it's between 4 and 8, it's going to be 10. And I'm running out of paper. Um, but I'm running out of room. Um, but that's the idea. And then this one would be linear. And then this one would be um, like upside down quadratic. OK. Um, so that's about piecewise functions. It can have lots of parts. Um, also, just real quick, on your calculators, there's a piecewise button. Um, so when you go to a graph, the button to the right of the 9 is like this one, and it brings up a menu. Over here is the absolute value, but we would want um, ones with curly braces where we would have a place for the function as well as for the um, condition. Again, I don't want to take too much time on this, um, so I'll just stop before I start on that. But you have your function on the left and your condition, like the inequality on the right. OK, um, then we talk about even and odd functions. Um, so it's even if a negative value matches the positive, which was the original um, like symmetric to the y-axis. Um, for example, um, if you have something like x squared, and you have the point 2, 4 up here, you'd have the point negative 2, 4 right here. And so um, f of 2 equal 4, f of negative 2 is also equal to 4. It's the same thing. Um, and so we could say this is f of x, and this is f of negative x. Um, and then what we also say is it's symmetric to the y-axis. So it's not just that it's an even exponent. Uh, because you would even later on have um, cosine. You might remember this from pre-cal. Um, cosine is even. And you would also have sine is odd. Uh, but in the same way, like the graph of x cubed would be odd because it's symmetric to the origin. So this part corresponds to that part. OK, so even with symmetric to the y-axis, um, odd is when it's symmetric to the origin. Now what we also say is f of negative x equal negative f of x. Well, um, let's think about why that would be. Um, so for example, y equal x cubed. Is it even or odd? Um, so you can do it by graphing, but what they want you to do is say, what happens if you replace x with a negative x, or the opposite of x? So that would be when it's negative x to the third power. And um, that, um, if you want to take more than one step, you could say that's negative x squared times negative x. Or you could just say, hey, I know that that's negative x cubed. And if this is positive x cubed, then this is negative x cubed. It, it's this definition. So uh, for the most part, we just look at the graph because that's easier. But this is the technical way to do it. Um, there's even parts later on that you may say you have a positive angle and a negative angle. You know, so positive x and negative x. But we'll get to that later. 
Um, you could also say there's a rotation of 180 about the origin. So again, for x cubed, it's going to be like this. And so if you rotated this 180 degrees, um, then it would match whether it goes this direction or that direction. OK, um, so here's a list of common functions. Um, they call this a problem string, um, which just means do a lot. Um, and so linear would be like this, which is odd. Um, x squared would be even. Absolute value would be a V graph, which is even. Y equal 3 would be a horizontal line, which is even. OK, so um, that's how you do those. Notice the even ones were symmetric to the Y axis. Um, the odd ones were um, symmetric to the origin. Now this one, x equal negative 2, that would be a vertical line. And so we'd have to say neither. Because it's not symmetric to the y-axis, it's symmetric to the x-axis. And it's not also not symmetric to the origin. Um, now when we get to the square root of x, um, that's going to be like this, where you have um, 4, 2, and 9, 3. Because the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3. Um, that's going to be neither. But when we do plus and minus square root of x, let's see, that. Um, I wonder if that's going to be down here or over here. Negative square root of x is down below. So that one would not be a function, but that's also neither. So that's uh, one of your sideways parabolas if you remember conics. Um, now this one is saying x um, or y squared equal x. So this would be like um, y equal plus and minus the square root of x, um, which is the same thing. So that's neither. So both of those are the same thing. Um, and then you have x squared equal y is the same as y equal x squared, which is like that. Um, so that would be even. And then the square root of negative x, I think, just goes this direction. Um, go to the graph. And let's delete this and make this negative. So that just goes over here like that. OK, so that's what those graphs look like. I um, mean, I told you whether they're even, odd, or neither. Um, two variables, y and x, are proportional to one another if one's always a constant multiple. And you notice the y-intercept equals 0. Um, so your slope would be the same thing as k, and that'd be directly apportion proportional. Um, but if it's the reciprocal or multiplicative inverse, um, then it'd be 1 over x. So like um, directly proportional is drive more, um, use more gas. And the reciprocal would be drive more, and then your distance um, between the cities decreases. if you understand. So like, say you're in Waco and you're driving to Dallas. As time goes by, you're closer. So anyway, um, that'd be um, inversely proportional. Um, then we're also going to talk about power functions, which is when it's like x to the a, where a is a constant. Um, so a could be a positive integer, like x squared. Um, 
like x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, whatever. Um, if a is negative one or negative two, then that would be like one over x and x to the negative two would be like one over x squared. I need to pause the video. Okay, um, so continuing, uh, we just said the case when a is negative one, which is one over x, or the reciprocal or rational function. Um, I've heard it called reciprocal function and rational function. So it's the same thing. Um, and then this one. Okay, um, moving on. Uh, the case when it's a half, um, so if we go back, it's x to the a, so this would be x to the half, which we said earlier is the square root of x. Um, this one's the cube root of x. Um, x to the three halves would be a root of two, so you don't really write the two there, and you put x cubed there. And then um, three uh, two thirds means the root is three and it's x squared. Um, make sure you recognize the difference between them. Um, so a function is a polynomial if it looks like this. You can have a constant term, a linear term, and it just backs up. So the next one would be x squared, so a quadratic term a cubic term, and so forth, as much as you need. Um, a rational function is, um, well, a rational number, remember, can be written as a fraction, like 4 is the same thing as 4 over 1 or 8 over 2. Well, a rational function has to have x somewhere in the denominator. Um, you could have, like, the simplest one would be 1 over x or some number over x. But you could also have um, x plus 3 over x minus 1, or you know x squared plus 5 over x squared minus 3. Um, so those are rational functions. Algebraic functions, um, that just means that it has algebraic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Those are probably the ones you thought about but also taking roots, um, like square root, cube root, et cetera, nth root. Sometimes we put a little n there. Um, trig functions um, are briefly mentioned. Now 1.3 is going to cover trig also, but that's the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. Um, exponential functions are when the exponent is x, like the most common ones, 2 to the x, 10 to the x. Um, logarithm, okay, so exponential go up fast. Um, I'm just going to say up fast. Let's look at this just real briefly. Um, 2 raised to the x. Um, it looks like this. It goes through 0, 1. It's like that. And then um, logarithmic would be um, y equal log base 2 of x, or y equal log base 10 of x, um, which are inverses of those. So tab. Um, here, I put a 2 here, put an x here, and like that. And so you can see that these are um, reflections across y equal x because they match. So um, they reflect across y equal x since they're inverses. Okay. Um, I know that's a lot of information, but for the most part, you've already seen that before. Um, now, there's also something really new to you. Um, it's called transcendental. 
Um, those are the ones that are not algebraic. They include trig, inverse trig, inverse... Uh, oh, that's listed twice. Um, exponential and log and has many others. The catenary, for example, um, has the shape of a cable like a telephone line or an electric cable um, strung from one to the other. So, um, yeah. I guess I'll show you that picture real quick um, since I have a book available. Remember, you can borrow a book um, if you write down the number. Um, so under 1-1, one, one, right there. So there's the um, catenary. And here you can see like the difference between the log graphs. Okay, so um, as I might have mentioned before, the calculus lessons are really long. I haven't even gotten to the problems yet, and here we are about 31 minutes in. So I'm going to end this video, um, and then I'll start a new one. You might even be able to do some of this at the same day, um, but I'm just going to have it as a separate video. All right, see you later. Hope that helps.